In this video, I'm talking about the truth about magnesium deficiency, what magnesium does in the body, the most common signs and symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. I'm gonna go through the reasons why people develop magnesium deficiencies. I'm also gonna go through why the RDA level is too low, some of the best foods to consume and best strategies to optimize your magnesium levels. So let's get into this. Magnesium is a critical mineral used by over 300 enzymatic processes, over 600 biological functions in the body. Dr. Norman Shealy, MD, PhD researcher says, according to him, magnesium deficiency is associated with every known chronic inflammatory disorder, every known chronic disease at some level has a magnesium deficiency associated with it. And magnesium deficiency is one of the most common deficiencies in our society. And the reason for that is because magnesium is to the body what oil is to a car, meaning the more stress we're under, the more we're utilizing magnesium. And that's because magnesium is critical for all mitochondrial energy production. When the mitochondria has enough magnesium, it can produce a lot of energy. When magnesium levels get down too low, it's a rate limiting step for mitochondrial energy production. So our energy levels, the cellular energy reduces. And when cellular energy reduces, we're not able to detoxify as effectively. None of the cells are able to do their optimal function. They're not able to produce energy the way that they need and express themselves the way that they need for optimal health. Also, magnesium is key for calcium balance. What that means is magnesium helps keep the optimal level of calcium within a cell. Calcium is really key for all action potentials within all of our neurons, within our muscles, for carrying out any sort of muscle contraction, we need optimal calcium levels. When we have too much calcium in a cell, it overexcites the cell and can actually create something called excitotoxicity, which can damage the cell, increase oxidative stress and inflammation in our system. In fact, a high intracellular calcium to magnesium ratio is associated with a higher mortality, overall mortality rate. So it's a really, really big factor. Magnesium helps balance the calcium levels. Magnesium is also key for vitamin D absorption. We can be exposed to the sun and take vitamin D supplements. And if we don't have enough magnesium, we're not gonna convert the inactive form of vitamin D into the active form of vitamin D that our cells can utilize for uh, immunomodulation, for blood sugar regulation, all the great things that vitamin D does for our body. So there's a lot of talk about vitamin D deficiency and it is a really big deficiency but before we even can address vitamin D, we've got to get our magnesium levels optimized for good vitamin D absorption. So super key there. <clears throat> On top of that, vitamin D helps block substance P, which substance P, when it's elevated in our system, increases overall pain in our body, and it helps to modulate what we call the NMDA receptor. The NMDA receptor is associated with glutamine activity in our brain. Glutamine is like the gas pedal on all of our neurons in our brain. And so when we have too much glutamine, not enough of the breaks, which is GABA, we end up with uh, irritability, with different types of mood disorders, anxiety, with depression, right? Because the neurons will actually overexcite themselves, they'll, they'll cause cell damage, and uh, ultimately that can lead to a high level of brain, of, of inflammation in the brain, which can lead to depression. And so, Magnesium is really like a, a balancer in our neurons and in our brain and keeps the neurons firing at their optimal level, which is gonna help improve our mood, our thinking process, our memory. Uh, so better mood, better memory, and overall better mindset. So super key there. So symptoms of, the major sim signs and symptoms, poor cognition and brain fog, muscle spasms, really, really common. People have muscle spasms, leg spasms, nighttime, uh, leg cramps, things like that, often associated with magnesium deficiency. Headaches, now headaches aren't really a neuronal issue as much as they are like muscle contractions, oftentimes tension headaches, things like that in and around this area, oftentimes can be treated with magnesium. Constipation, for good muscle activity, good muscle contractions, we call that peristalsis in the gut, we need to have optimal magnesium levels. Fatigue, obviously if we're not able to produce enough energy in the mitochondria, then we're gonna have either inadequate muscle contractions or sporadic muscle contractions, which obviously can contribute to constipation. And then also fatigue, we're not gonna be able to have as much energy as we need. 
Insomnia, which is really big. So when the brain is being overexcited because there's too much calcium in the cells, then we're not, it's really hard to wind down and sleep. We end up wired and tired. So we're tired, we don't have energy because we're not able to produce mitochondrial energy, but we can't shut down our brain at night because we have too much calcium in the cells, too much glutamine in the cells. We end up with neuroexcitotoxicity where one neuron's damaging the other neuron next to it. It's like a domino effect. And we end up with widespread neuronal damage and really a lot of trouble sleeping and a lot of trouble winding down. Um, that brings us down here, mood disorders. We talked about anxiety, depression, irritability, um, anger issues can be associated with magnesium deficiency, chronic pain because of the increase in substance P. Substance P elevations in our bloodstream are associated with more pain in the body. When we get a tissue, tissue injury, like we hurt our knee, we fall on our knee or something like that, we get an increase in substance P, particularly locally, right in that one area, causing swelling, pain, inflammation, all part of the healing process. We don't have enough magnesium, we're gonna get higher amounts of substance P really throughout our whole body, which is gonna make pain, it's gonna lower the threshold for where our brain experiences pain. Pain is an experience in our brain. We may have a, an area that's damaged, but the area, we're actually, where we're perceiving the pain is in our brain. And so the lower the threshold, the pain threshold in our brain, the higher amount of pain that we're gonna experience. Things that wouldn't normally cause pain may now cause more pain in our system. And so again, associated with magnesium deficiency, heart, improper heart rhythms, like heart arrhythmias or tachycardias where we have um, excessive heartbeat, um, that can all be associated with magnesium deficiency as well because magnesium deficiency is super key for keeping all the muscle contractions working well, including the heart. Numbness and tingling because of the association with pain, with substance P. We're gonna end up with more numbness, more tingling perhaps if we have a magnesium deficiency. So these are the most common signs and symptoms. And really the reasons why people get magnesium deficiency, it's either gonna be inadequate intake or it could be poor absorption, right? So we may not be consuming enough. We also may not be absorbing enough because we don't have enough stomach acid. Stomach acid is key for actually chelating minerals, zinc, magnesium, calcium, and absorbing that into our system. So we need optimal stomach acid. So a lot of people are very low in stomach acid. They're eating on the go, they're eating bad foods that stress their system, and that can cause low stomach acid, low mineral absorption. People with celiac disease or irritable bowel may not be able to absorb enough magnesium from their diet. So that can be a really big factor as well. If you have blood sugar imbalances, if you have insulin resistance, we actually need insulin to get magnesium into the cell. So if we have insulin resistance and blood sugar dysregulation, we're not gonna be able to actually get the magnesium into the cell where it can balance the calcium to magnesium ratio, where it can act on the NMDA receptor, where it can reduce substance P levels, where it can optimize vitamin D absorption. And so if that's the case, we're gonna end up with a magnesium deficiency. In fact, really common, anybody with insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes, they're all magnesium deficient. Like we've gotta really upregulate their magnesium levels and as a part of the process of helping them get well. So that's one way. And then also we can have too much excretion. We're gonna excrete a lot if we're over consuming caffeine, if we're drinking a lot of alcohol, if we're eating a lot of processed foods, high carbohydrate foods, we're gonna excrete more of this. Um, if we're taking certain types of medications, almost all medications cause us to excrete more magnesium. And so we might be losing too much, we might not be absorbing enough, or we might not be consuming enough magnesium. Either way, research says that roughly 80 to 90% of our population is magnesium deficient on a chronic basis. And then even if you're healthy, the more stress you're under, the more you're using magnesium. So even like somebody like myself that's very aware of this, I can go through periods of time where I'm magnesium sufficient, and then let's say this is the threshold, I'm under more stress, magnesium goes down, right? And I've gotta upregulate it. And so you could, most people, even healthy people, are gonna at least be, be magnesium deficient at throughout different periods of time throughout the day. So supporting your magnesium levels is super critical for overall health. So how do we go about that? How do we optimize our magnesium levels? Well, the RDA says you need about 300 to 420 milligrams of magnesium a day, depending on if you're a male or female. Males typically need more, your, your overall body size, your age, 
you know, they say men over 30 need roughly around 420 milligrams, whereas like a woman under 30, roughly around 300 milligrams. And of course, the more overall body mass you have, the more magnesium in general that you need, the less body mass, the less you need. Now, in functional medicine, we say the optimal is really about 450 to 800 milligrams. That's what we're looking at in the functional nutrition world. We want to make sure that we're not just, you know, patching up some of these symptoms, but we're optimizing our overall mitochondrial function and our overall expression. So we need more magnesium. In some cases, we'll do something called magnesium loading, where we'll do something like 1,000 milligrams of magnesium a day for a period of time, and sometimes even more, to help optimize magnesium levels for somebody that was very, very deficient in magnesium. So when we're looking at that, it's gonna be really hard to get that from food. You know, the foods that are high in magnesium are gonna be things like green leafy vegetables, lots of different types of nuts and seeds, pumpkin seeds, things like that. But those also have anti-nutrients. They have oxalates, they have enzyme inhibitors, things like that, that can reduce overall absorption of a lot of these nutrients, okay? And so a lot, particularly magnesium. And so because of that, um, some animal foods, if you have enough stomach acid, you can get magnesium from eggs, from grass-fed meats, wild-caught salmon, from sardines with the bones, bone broth in general, right? All of those things are great. And I just recommend when it comes to diet, you stick with real foods, okay? I wouldn't overly concern yourself with anti-nutrients or with you know maybe negative things you may have heard about animal foods. I would stick with organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised animal products, organic fruits and vegetables, right? And consume really a healthy, nutrient-dense diet but I would recommend supplementing with magnesium. Just about everybody benefits from some level of magnesium supplementation. It could be as little as 100 milligrams a day of a highly absorbable magnesium. For many people, 200 to 400 milligrams of additional magnesium plays a really big role. And they notice a huge difference in their overall health. Their brain functions better, they have better memory, better cognitive acceleration, their ability to think sharply and quickly. Um, gets upregulated, their energy levels improve, their pain reduces, better overall mental awareness, better mood, less anxiety, less depression, they sleep better at night. I mean, all of these things can improve with as little as, you know, even 100 milligrams of magnesium supplementation. So some of the best forms of magnesium are magnesium citrate, magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, magnesium orotate, and you know my favorite magnesium L uh, theanine, which threonine, which is the the type that has been researched to to actually cross the blood brain barrier most effectively. And so um, there's a, a form called magtine, the trademark form of magnesium L threonate that crosses that blood brain barrier really effectively and has really quick results at reducing anxiety, at helping improve overall mental function. And so that's my favorite type, but malate, magnesium malate, magnesium citrate, a lot of great, great uh, health benefits to those forms of magnesium as well. And even elemental magnesium that you can get in certain types of supplements, as long as it's in a form where you can absorb it um, and, and utilize it, that's gonna be effective. And there's lotions that you can put on. And also, you can also do Epsom salt baths, right? So Epsom salts, naturally high in magnesium. And so a lot of people notice that taking magnesium transdermally works really well for their body. So whether it's an Epsom salt bath that they're taking, Epsom salts have magnesium and sulfates. Sulfates help with liver detoxification. Magnesium does as well. It's very important for liver detoxification. And then also the magnesium absorbs from the Epsom salts in the bath, absorbs into your body. If you don't have time for a bath, you can do Epsom salts um, in water and just put your feet in it, right? And just stick your feet in it and that will help. If you drink Epsom salts, you're not actually gonna absorb much of the magnesium in there. Orally is not a good form. It'll act more as a laxative and just flush you out. So if you're really constipated, you can drink Epsom salts. That will help flush you out um, and almost like give you an enema in a sense, an oral enema, but you're not gonna actually absorb the magnesium into your system effectively. So that's what you gotta remember with Epsom salts. Also doesn't taste good at all. Uh, in fact, it'll make you kind of nauseous if you consume a lot of that. And so, with that said, Epsom salt's a great way to get it transdermally. There's also transdermal creams, magnesium chloride or different types of magnesium creams and oils that you can actually put on your body. So you can put those on your body, rub them in really good, 
and that's a great way to absorb magnesium as well. And then of course there's oral magnesium supplements, there's powders and capsules that you can take. Again, good forms, magnesium citrate, magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, magnesium orate, all good forms, magnesium chloride, good form, and my favorite magnesium L3 and 8 for the brain, nervous system, that tends to work the best, although you'll get some benefit from all of those for, all, for, for neurological function with all of those. So with that said, that is the truth about magnesium. My favorite brand of magnesium is our Brain Calm Magnesium, which is a form of, it's got the magteen formed by MIT researchers, magnesium L3 and 8. On top of that, it's got the magnesium malate and magnesium lysinate glycinate in albium forms, which is the research form for the highest level of absorption. And so this product was really crafted for optimal magnesium absorption, getting a blend of three different types of magnesium to really help, uh, help optimize your neurology, your muscle function, and your overall health and well-being. Magnesium is key. If you're gonna supplement with one thing, I would say get a really good, highly absorbable magnesium on board or do something, like we talked about Epsom salt baths, uh, magnesium lotions to get more magnesium into your system. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, got a lot out of it. Please share this information with somebody you know and you care about, and we'll see you guys in a future training. Be blessed.